Welcome to Bible Tract Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracts, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracts Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracts and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Good day to you, my friend. Welcome to the broadcast. Thank you so much for letting us be a part of your day. Right now, my Bible is open to the book of 2 Peter in chapter 1. If you can, get your own Bible open there and join me. 2 Peter in chapter 1. I'll begin to read at verse 16 here in just a moment. You may also want to get something on which you can jot a couple of notes. I really try most every day to give a clear outline of the passage we're dealing with, the outline I think will help you review these verses later on. Also, you'll have the means with that pad of paper in front of you to jot down our contact information. I want to give you a free sample packet containing all of our English gospel tracks. My announcer is going to provide some contact information at the end of the broadcast. I'm going to speak about one of those tracks here in just a moment, but let me lead our, ourselves into the study this way. In 1975, I became a youth pastor. One of the men I met in that very first year had, within the last three years before that, had some major tragedies happen to his life. His wife had died of cancer. His house had burned to the ground, but it was rebuilt. But then within months, his new rebuilt house was flooded to the point that it had four or five feet of water in the living room. It was that high up. All of this happened before, as I said, I met the man. Then after I met the man, his teenage daughter was killed by a drunk driver. And needless to say, this man had faced his fair share of tragedy and more, humanly speaking. Well, one day while out on visitation with him, I asked him how he dealt with all the tragedy and uh, how did he keep his sanity? And how did he keep his demeanor of peace and joy? I asked if his demeanor of peace and joy was just a front or was it the real th- stuff? Was it the real thing? He assured me that it was genuine. When this guy spoke of dealing with tragedy, brother, I listened. He had credentials that made his voice valuable. Well, today in 2 Peter 1, Peter is going to tell us why his voice needs to be listened to and valued when he urges us to grow as believers, grow to become more like Christ. Get your Bible, get something with which you can jot some notes. I mentioned the sample packet of tracks here a moment ago. That word tracts is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. We're referring to a gospel tract, a short written presentation of the plan of salvation as found in the Word of God. The gospel tract in my hand right now is entitled, When You Meet God. When you meet God, it has on the front face a picture of a lady. She's kneeling before a gravestone. Obviously, somebody that she loved has passed away, and she's there moaning over the fact, humanly speaking, that her loved one is gone. Now, friend, it's appointed unto man once to die, but after that, the judgment. Thus, the title of the track, When You Meet God. Now, friend, you and I are going to meet God one day. He will either be our Savior or our judge. Which will it be? This gospel track lays out with great clarity, with great kindness, but it just confronts people with their need. They need to be prepared today for the eternity they will face who knows when. You and I do not know what a day may bring forth. Today may be the day you and I stand before Christ. Are we ready to meet him? At the end of the program, as I said, my announcer is going to come back on and give our contact information. Give us, please, your name and address. We'll send you that free sample packet. If you cannot wait till the end of the program, jot this down. Our website is www.bibletracksinc.org. Get those tracks from us. 
Let's you and I become a partner in the gospel. Well, 2 Peter chapter 1, beginning of verse 16, the Bible says this, For we have not followed cunningly devised fables when we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received from God the Father honor and glory when there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory. This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. And this voice which came from heaven we heard when we were with him in the holy mount. We're going to stop right there. Now, I've been using a series of words uh, for uh, to form an outline for chapter one. All of the words begin with the letter E, like in the word elephant. And so far, here are the words I've used with the verses they go with. Skipping over verses one and two, those are the introductory verses. The E word for verses three and four is the word enjoy, enjoying our new provisions we have in Jesus Christ and his salvation. Then for verses 5 through 9, the word is encouraging, encouraging new growth. That's what the Apostle Peter is doing here, encouraging new growth in our walk with Christ. Verses 10 and 11, the word is entering. Believers will be entering a new kingdom. In verses 12, 13, 14, and 15, my word was eulogy. There was a eulogy for a new generation of believers, but now here, verses 16 through 18, my E word comes from the verses here. It's the word eyewitnesses. Peter was an eyewitness to new glory. Look at verse 16. It begins with our English word for, F-O-R. The Greek word translated here means that a reason is about to be given. Peter, after urging believers to throw all they have, all their energy, into the process of growing strong in Christ's likeness, Peter says, in essence, this. Here, believer, is why you ought to listen to me. Let me use a couple of words here just to uh, give subpoints here in verses 16, 17, and 18. Some words beginning with the letter T, like in the word truck. My first one is the word truth, or I could use the word trustworthiness. Verse 16 says, we, speaking of the apostles, we have not followed cunningly devised fables. You probably already know by your time in church and in the Word of God that there were some first century religious leaders who were speaking demeaningly of the apostles, particularly of the apostle Paul. They said he, Paul, was not really a true, a genuine apostle, and so therefore don't listen to the apostle Paul. Well, Frankly, all of the apostles were being attacked in the first century by other religious leaders. Peter and the other apostles were accused of making up stories. Peter here is going to openly deal with those accusers when he gets to chapter 2. But here in verse 16, two truths are pointed out that Peter had already dealt with. Jesus' power and his coming. Peter spoke of his power and his coming. Now, the word for coming here refers to his second coming, not the rapture, but the second coming. We're going to see the second coming talked about when we get to the third chapter of our book. Some Bible translations here see these two words, power and coming, as if they were one idea. They translate it this way, uh, that Jesus is powerful coming. Now, friend, in all fairness, that is a possible way to look at these words uh, grammatically, but I don't think that's best in the context. You see, verse 3 has already spoken about Jesus's divine power. Jesus's power is given to us, to believers, so that we can live a life of godliness and true holiness. How do we know Jesus' power can do this in our lives? Well, just look at what Jesus' power did in the gospel accounts. The healings, the the storm calming events, the dead that were raised, all seen in the power there when you read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. All that power, that same power is placed at our disposal. Now, let me just quickly, my listener friend, make a note. Please listen. 
Jesus' power in you and me is there to help us live godly. It's not there to help us calm storms or raise dead people. Those miracles were done by Jesus to verify that he was the true promised Messiah. You and I verify we are genuine children of God by living out a holy life, a life that's lived in the world, but we are not captured by the world's mindset. We're not captured by the world's passions. We live with eternity in view, not just today in view. All right. Peter speaks about the truthfulness of his teaching. Here, here's another word beginning with the letter T. It's the word transfiguration. Verse 16 ends with Peter saying that he was an eye witnesses to, uh, to Jesus' majesty. Then in verse 17, Peter reminds us of how Jesus was transfigured there in Matthew chapter 17. Again, some religious liberal people, both then and now, have said, continue to say, that Peter and James and John were only hallucinating there on the Mount with Jesus. They only thought they saw the transfiguration. These same kind of people, frankly, deny all the miraculous events of Jesus's life. Well, coming back to the verses here, when we come now to verse 17, Peter adds one more point on one more T word. It's the word talk. God the Father While Jesus was transfigured before Peter, James, and John, God the Father audibly spoke just as he did at Jesus' baptism. The Father said, it's recorded here, this is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. How do we end and try to wrap this up in a nice bow for today? Maybe, Maybe the best way to do it is this. Jesus himself openly claimed to be God. Now, there are people who say he did not, and that's a farce. Of course he did. Jesus in John 10 said, I and the Father are what? (laughs) I and the Father are one. I call that pretty straight talk, don't you? If you read through the Gospel of John, you'll find that Jesus on a number of occasions claimed to be God. He claimed to be the one who will raise the dead and so on. But here, God the Father openly claimed Jesus to be God. Now, if Jesus claimed to be God and proved it by his miracles, and God the Father said that Jesus was God, friend, what will you do with Jesus? Have you received him as Savior? Or as that gospel tract I mentioned a moment ago, when you meet God and you have not dealt with him as God, as Savior, as Lord of your life, then you will face him as a severe eternal judge. Friend, you need a Savior. There's only one. There's only one that can wash the sin stain from your soul. His name is Jesus. That's why he died on the cross. He loves you. He died in your place that you, through him, might be saved. If you've never received him today, bow your head and heart and make Christ your Savior. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.